I'm doing a video breakdown of the Think Tank Photo Mirrorless Mover 25i photo bag. I already wrote a review of this bag on my blog at ocabj.net, outlining my thoughts and opinions on the bag, the reasoning and the background why I bought the bag and why I'm sticking with it. But I wanted to do a video for YouTube so that people could watch it and then if they're searching for a bag and if they see this video and are, have further interest, they can, just go to, they can go to my blog and read that article, which I'll link to in the video description below with those detailed thoughts and opinions as well as photos of the bag and the gear in it. But just a quick breakdown or a background of why I bought this bag. The Mirrorless Mover 25i, I bought it for my Olympus OMD EM10 Mark II Micro Four Thirds kit, hence the name Mirrorless Mover. And so all my existing bags for, for Kodo gear is all is for DSLRs. So if I use those bags for this kit, it's just inefficient. I have a lot of excessive dead space for all this small gear to fit in a large bag. And so to make my transportation of this gear more efficient, I wanted to seek out a smaller bag. And as you can see, this bag is very small and compact. It's about 11 inches wide, six inches tall, four to five inches deep. Uh, you can get those detailed dimension, external dimensions on Think Tank Photo's website, but that's roughly what this is. It's a simple design. You can see here's a shoulder bag. I've got a single strap here. Uh, clipped on on these two D-rings here, so it's a quick release if you need to. And it's a single flap that is actually a zipper as well as magnets. So the magnets come up exposing the main compartment and the small secondary compartment. The secondary compartment on the front is just a small flat style pocket. Uh, it can hold flat gear or flat items, so cash, documents, ID cards, business cards will fit nicely in here. And then the main compartment is where you put all your gear in and that is also protected by a zipper. And you have your standard dividers in this, in the main compartment to hold that gear. As I mentioned earlier, it's a very simple design for the mirrorless mover 25i. If I open this flap to expose that main compartment, I can just unzip the compartment cover. And inside the compartment cover is actually a pocket, a zippered pocket. And this is, can hold some slightly more bulkier gear than that could be held inside this front pocket here. And this is a good effective use of dead space because even though the mirrorless mover 25i is for smaller mirrorless cameras more than likely your gear isn't going to be very tall even in this small bag and therefore you will have some dead space above your gear and so having this pocket makes effective use of that dead space i put two olympus batteries in here and you can probably put more stuff in here but whatever you do here it's going to be ideal because you have still have some dead space above your gear this pocket can hold some bulkier items and therefore you can make use of that space and be more efficient with this bag. Going on though, you'll see that I have this gear, the divider set up for my specific gear. I have the Olympus OMD EM10 Mark II and with a lens attached. I have the 17 F18 attached and it's flanked by the 45 millimeter F18 in one side. I have the 60 millimeter F28 macro and then the bigger 12 to 40 F28. In this rear spot here, there's a slot for an iPad mini. I don't own an iPad mini, so I put a Moleskine notebook in here, and that's what most people will probably want to do is put a notebook in here or, or some flat items if they don't have an iPad mini. And as, as you can see here, I also have a divider, which I'm not using. I just fold it up, put it inside the pocket, so I'd like to have it around in the case that I might need that divider if I'm out in the field or whatnot. But as far as my setup is concerned, I do like it how it's set up for here for my, uh, my specific kit. So I can have the camera in the center line and I can have the lens attached. And if I need to, I can switch to my larger 12 to 40. If I can throw that on there. And I can still move around with this, with this lens on the body. And if I need to just shove it back in there, it's not a perfect fit, but it still closes up nicely. And it's not a problem to have the 12 to 40 on, the, on this body and put it in the bag. One interesting note is this divider here. It's kind of a single divider, but it's got two, two sides to it, creating this taco style pocket here. And you can put a phone in here. I think that's what they had in their example photos. So an iPhone 6 or 6S will fit in here, but my 6S Plus does not fit in here, it's too tall. And on this side of the divider, you have two slots for SD cards. I have one SD card here, just for an example. But inside this little taco pouch here, I just put a pen. I have a Fisher Space Pen in there, and I have a small flashlight, and it fits just quite nicely in there. So you can put some nice, interesting items in here, maybe even more batteries here, or some cables or whatnot. 
But this is pretty much how I have my, my gear set up. More than likely, I don't think I'll fit a fifth lens in here. I thought about getting a 75 millimeter f1.8, but I don't think it'll fit in the way I have this thing set up right now. I could probably put that fourth divider or some other divider here and kind of put sneak it in here. But for right now, my four lens kit, this is gonna run perfect. And if I ever decide, decide to buy another lens, I may have to reorganize what I carry with me. But right now, this is pretty ideal. If there's one negative aspect about this bag that I want to bring up, that would be the strap. The strap itself is, is sufficient for carrying this bag since the bag is light and small. But the strap is kind of thin and it's not very wide. So it's about one inch wide and the material itself isn't very thick. I mean, it's, it's sufficient. I don't think it's gonna be problematic as far as durability. But from a stability standpoint, I think a wider strap and a thicker, more, uh, I guess, stiffer material would have been better for providing a more stable platform if you're moving around. So if this bag, you know, is on your body and you're walking around, I don't know if you're on like a photo walk or something, and you're trying to move the body, that bag around your body, it's going to kind of flop around because this is all that's holding the bag to your body. So if you had some, a strap that's wider and stiffer, it would give a more, a more stable feeling when the bag's on the body and therefore it won't feel too, how should we say, unstable or loose. And therefore, I think that would provide a more sense of comfort if any, in knowing that the bag is going to stay where you want it to stay when you're moving around. And that would be one negative thing I wanted to bring up. That concludes my video summary of the Think Tank Photo Mirrorless Mover 25i photo bag. Again, if you have any other interest in this bag at all, definitely check out my blog and read the review, which I'll link to in the video description below. But also check out Think Tank Photo's website for technical details, including the external and internal dimensions for the bag. But there's one other thing to note. There are several other variants in the Mirrorless Mover line. A few smaller ones and one larger one, the 30i. I didn't get the 30i specifically because it seemed like it was gonna be too big for my kit. Uh, as you saw earlier, the 25i fits my single body EM10 Mark II and four lens kit perfectly. But if you don't have a kit just like mine or that varies significantly from mine, it's less lenses or more lenses, then you can also still check out the mirrorless mover series but look at one of the other models. With that being said, I highly recommend the mirrorless mover 25i if you have a kit similar to mine. And if even if you don't, check out one of the other mirrorless mover camera bag models and I think you'll be happy with it if you decide to go with this bag. Thanks for watching.